wanted to talk to you guys about today is the importance of having a good local comic shop. I don't mean an okay one. I mean having a good one. And it's really important to have one of these. The reason why it's really important to have one of these is every once in a while, you're going to have a day where you just say to yourself, you know what, I just need something to read. Every comic shop out there is going to have a lot of certain items. Those certain items are going to be things like trade paperbacks, uh, role-playing card game stuff, magic stuff, Pokemon stuff, stuff like that. And I know I just said Pokemon wrong, but I don't care. Uh, the other thing it's going to have is a lot of current comics. And most people, when they're buying current comics, they're picking them up and they're saying, ah, they still have that collector's mentality. Don't ask me why. It's still a big thing out there, but a lot of people pick up new stuff and they're literally grabbing it because they're saying to themselves, I'm going to put this in a bag and I'm going to put it down somewhere after I read it and maybe it'll be worth something, you know, a hundred years from now. It will, but you know what? A hundred years from now, it's going to be worth just as much as if it was put in that bag aboard the day that you bought it or if you read it once or twice and then put it in the bag aboard or if you didn't do anything because a hundred years from now, people are just going to pay the same amount just for having it. Obviously, it's going to serve premiums, but whatever. I honestly don't see comic collecting existing 50 years from now. That's my prediction for the future. That being what it is, every once in a while you say to yourself, I want to read something, but you don't want to pick up something that's trade paperbacks because most of that stuff is relatively new. And if you're not into new stuff, like I'm not into new stuff, you don't want to grab that stuff. Um, you don't want to pay a huge premium and spend 50 bucks for a book from the 40s and the 50s just so you can tear it open and read it uh, because that gets really costly. There are times when you want to do that, but it gets really costly. But the importance of like a really good one, a good one has back issues. A lot of shops that will open up nowadays have a lot of current stuff, and you know what, they're playing the margins game. They're getting a lot of stuff in, they're getting a lot of stuff out. That's it, in, out, in, out. It's pennies in the dollar. They're doing the same thing with the figures, they're doing the same thing with uh, the cards, they're doing the same thing with the uh, role-playing game stuff. It's all just get it in, get it out. It's inventory is the first death of business. It's the first graveyard of business right there. The second one is trade credit, for those of you who are wondering. But inventory is a dangerous one, so most people try to avoid that, just trying to get it in and out. So a lot of places will not carry back issues, or if they do, it's a very nominal amount. I'm fortunate. I have a local comic shop that's around me. Uh, it's called Comic Book Edition, uh, and they have a massive amount of back stock. And you know what? I'm positive this costs them a butt ton to carry, but it pays dividends for them. I went by there uh, the other day because I said, I need something to read. I don't want to spend a fortune, but again, I didn't want to buy anything new. And this is why it's really important to have a good one. Let me show you what I got when I was there. And, and you're going to be a little, probably most of you will be a little taken back by this. You're going to wonder why I bought it. But the thing that you really need to understand here is what am I going to have to read for what capital investment I put in? I say that's pretty important. Okay, so what did I get there? I walked in and effectively what I was saying to myself was I want to pick up some stuff. They have a warehouse area in the basement where you can go in and you can start digging through. And two bucks, okay, two bucks an issue, that's not bad. But when I'm buying, I'm like, I don't want to pick up some, you know, 1990s comic that was 20 some odd pages of which 10 were actually written material. I want to buy some older stuff. This is where you get lucky. Because if you have a good shop, you're going to be able to get stuff with a large selection and further back. So let me show you what I got. Okay, 1983, Justice League of America, annual number one. Not a huge issue. What is this? This is one of their dollar giants, I believe they made at the time. It's probably 40 some odd pages. Does it have a whole bag and board? No, it's a bag, but I'm reading it more right here. Uh, Incredible Hulk, annual number 15. Hulk is a nice brainless read. This is a good one. And this is what? Uh, 86. There's nothing really important about this, but again, there's nothing really important about newcomers that are going to go It's just a nice read. Incredible Hulk, annual number 10. This is where I start to get a little bit older. So annual number 10, this would have been the, I'm going to guess 83, maybe. I can't really tell anything off the back. Oh, 81. 81, it's right there in the corner. Annual number 10, 75 cents. King size annual. And the reason why I was buying annuals is because it's just more material to read. They're standalone stories. You can pick them up, read them, and then just chuck them when you're done. Like that. Then I got into something that's more of a, it, this is a go-to for me. And this is something I read often. And the reason why is because it's just brainless. Now, a lot of people are going to be really mad at me about this. There's something called, what, what, what was the phrase I heard for this the other day? Um, something masculinity. Aggressive masculinity? No, that wasn't it. Intimidating masculinity? I can't remember what the phrase was. It was a phrase that I basically inferred that over-the-top masculinity is bad. 
that. Yeah. We'll give that. Take it in context. If you don't want to read it, don't read it. Don't complain. Conan is a shining example of it. And I know Marvel got a lot of flack for the latest issue that just put up from some of the groups that are on the other side of the spectrum complaining, well, no, this is just aggressive, it's demeaning to women, it's like, I, I, granted, Conan is demeaning to women. Look at what they put these female characters in. I'm sorry, the Princess Leia slave outfit all over the place. If they're lucky enough to actually have something covered from this stuff. Um, but it's a mindless read. It's, it's just a good stuff to read. So what did I get here? So I got King Coin. 79, 1979. Two bucks. Number one. And these are massive. Like this is a 75 cent. This is, these are king size at the time. Again, it's probably a 48 pager. Um, number two, 1980. Yeah, another massive 40 some odd pager. Um, number three, 1980. Let's continue the read. Number four, 1980. Like, these are just good reads, and they're all massive. What's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven comics for fourteen dollars in, and I've got more material than I'd ever get in a trade paperback of mine today. Not bad. Last thing I got here, uh, Conan the Barbarian Annual Number Five. Now this was 1979. Again, it's the king size. This is another forty-some odd page monstrosity. It's a standalone story. I actually think I think I've read this. Why do I think I've read this story? Positive I've read this story. Most Conan stories, for those of you who don't know, are actually just retelling of the same story again and again and again. Uh, who was the guy who wrote? Is it Robert E. Howard? Yeah, Robert E. Howard wrote Conan. So, just story, 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 and they would constantly ha rehash the same thing. The story of Billet, for example, who was the pirate queen that he married, and him being called Amra. Well, that's the rehash, rehash, rehash. Positive, this is another one I read. But you know what? Who cares? They're, they're just good reads. And the best part about them is when I'm done, throw them out. They're two bucks. But that, that's a side rant. But the important thing that I really wanted to say here was that's a haul that I could get from literally just driving five minutes up the road from where I was, walking in and just saying, what do you got to read? And bam, I've got this massive stack of stuff that I can read. And when I'm done, I can actually fold them, stick them in my back pocket the way they used to do in the 1950s, and then maybe go ride my, my bicycle with my hockey cards in the supposed to go tick, 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 and uh, have a good time while I'm playing with a slide whistle. Because that's what you're supposed to do with comics. That, that's it. That's what they were designed to be. Mindless reads. Also designed to be something to run the printing presses while the evening shift was on so that the machine wouldn't turn itself off and then need constant ongoing maintenance. For those of you who are wondering what I'm talking about there, go look up the history of Charlton Comics. And it's a very interesting story. Uh, you should learn more about that because it gives you a key sense of how minor the comics industry was at one point in time, which I find quite curious. Anyways, as I say, today's story was just to walk through the importance of having a local, good local comic shop. There are a lot out there that are minor ones. Make sure you have one that's within a good driving distance of where you're at. I'd say if it's more than half an hour away, it's not local. Uh, but make sure you do have a good one. If you don't have a good one, you're going to have a really hard time getting into comics. Uh, because you're going to have a really limited exposure to the breadth of material that you have otherwise in a larger shop. I live in a small town, a well, smaller town. Um, I live in the suburbs of a major hub, uh, but I can tell you that major hub has really crappy selection in comics. Uh, out in the burbs is where I find better material. Uh, if you like these videos, uh, the hat that stays on at the bottom of the uh, video runs all the way down here. That's my subscribe button. Hit that. Uh, alternatively, if you want to hear me ramble on about more and more comic stuff, there's a playlist in the pop up over here just on comics. And then just to hammer the drive, the point home. Up here is where you're going to see another hat pop up, and that's the subscribe button as well, just to really drive them all. So, without babbling anymore, Nathan, get us out of here. Make sure to like and subscribe. Oh, you think so, eh? Alright, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna.